song I was telling you about that's hard for me to listen to. It's so beautifully done. Let's light the Christmas tree with Ruby Wright. <laughs> Christmas tree so wondrous bright and gay a light to shine through all this world on Christmas day bells will ring throughout the world again ringing out a song of peace and goodness to all men let those Christmas bells ring out with carols glad and gay while we spend this Christmas in the good old fashion and let's light the Christmas tree set its branches glowing bright lovely Christmas tree to each heart so dear Soon on the winter air, Christmas bells will ring. Soon, children everywhere, all the Christmas songs will sing. But somewhere across the snow hearts can still be lonely longing for those they love for those so far away so let's light a Christmas tree so wondrous bright and gay a light to shine through all this world on Christmas Day Ruby be right, ladies and gentlemen. You are a gem. You really are. Thank you. <laughs> right. I want to read you a little something while we're in a little bit of a melancholy mood here. This is from the WLW book, The Story of WLW, written by Dick Perry. And in it, Paul Dixon. Bonnie, I know this brings back memories for you. He, does a, he talks about Ruth when Ruth left television in 1967. It was such a nice tribute that I felt compelled to read it to you. It's not long, so bear with me. This was really an excerpt out of his book put into Dick Perry's book. <clears throat> he says, is it true you're no longer on the air, Ruth? I know it is true, but I can't conceive of it. WLW television without a Ruth Lyons? Impossible. That would be the same as having the sky without stars or, or the world without love. Ruth, you made this place what it is today. There he's talking about WLW. He says, you personally created the friendly atmosphere we now enjoy. Because you were, we can be. He goes on to say, all I know as I write this is I miss you and that I am not alone in missing you. You are missed by everyone. Do you remember, he says, that lovely little ballad called Have I Stayed Too Long at the Fair? By the way, one that Marion used to do so well. Still does. 
The song tells of a girl who wanders about the silent fairgrounds after the clowns have left and the crowds have vanished and the Ferris wheels have stopped running. I remember one day, Paul says, one of the girls sang that song on your show. And I remember that you commented, that girl was you, I'm sure. And I remember that you commented, Ruth, with a kind of melancholy that perhaps you too had stayed too long at the fair. And a few days later, Ruth, you got a letter from one of your fans that said it better than I could have ever said it. The letter said simply, Miss Lyons, don't worry about staying too long at the fair. Stay as long as you want. You see, when you leave, the fair will be over. That's right. Oh, that's Isn't that right. nice? This book, if we can get a shot of it, remember with me, it's a little bit tattered and torn after a lot of years of usage. Tilt it back, tilt it down. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, that was written by Ruth, and she wrote that upon her retirement. And I just want to give you, this is a little more up now, I just want to give you an, uh, an idea of, of her feelings on things. These are not surprises. Those of you who are devoted fans will remember some of this. She says, uh, here, she's talking about... Uh, uh, things here. I often think back on the various things that we discussed on the show, she says. The rise of women and their place in the world. Now let me tell you something. Ruth Lyons was way ahead of her time. Men were dominating the media, radio, television, and here she was, really the queen of the airwaves, no doubt about it. And probably, she, people forget, you know, Ruth Lyons was work for a while. Uh, was on the network. On the morning. Right. And not only that, but uh, for a while she went yes. on the Today Show on a That's trial right, on basis. The Today Show. Right, right, with Dave Garraway. She said, I remember how I disliked the Star Spangled Banner as our national anthem. And of course, she's saying that would be all the time, but she didn't like it as a national anthem. She liked the song, all right. But she said, I, I, I felt agree. that, she felt that only yeah, a few singers can really sing it. And you were one of them. Well, I did it a lot, I know that. <laughs> At Crosley Field and probably Riverfront Stadium. Still do, yeah. Right. She also says, I prefer, you know, American, the America the yes, Beautiful. Yes, I do too. I like that. Story. She says, I abhorred punishing children by whipping them. I deplored our involvement in Vietnam. I objected to the song, I want a girl just like the girl that married dear old dad. And she says, the reason she objected to it is that she felt the song was an insult to a young wife who probably was struggling to make an apple pie as good as her mother-in-law's. She says, I hated unkindness to others and cruelty to animals, pompousness, bigotry, and unfair tactics. I could never forgive the mistreatment of old people or injustice or lying or using someone else for one's own advantage. She also says, I resented the great deal of money being spent for outer space exploration. Now, those are very controversial kinds of yeah. beliefs to have. And she came out on television at noon for an hour and a half, five days a week, and told people about those things. And she said, here it is, take it or leave it. And you had to admire her for it. Oh, yeah. One thing she did back in the early 60s, she had a singer on the show, a black singer at that time, mm -hmm. and she danced with him on television in the early 1960s. And the male poured into the studio. You shouldn't be dancing with a black man on television. Well, she set her viewers straight the next day. And uh, this was the kind of lady she was. And you, could, you can't repeat a Ruth Lyons. You just can't. No. You can't try. No, yeah, you know, when Bob came on, Bob had his own style, his own mastery. Right. He and he was a, a smart fellow because he did just what uh, was perfect. He used his own style and worked with it. You know, tonight, we're going we're gonna to end this show. We're going to sing Have a Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas in a minute. And we're going to get everybody back up here so we can do that. But before we get to that, I can't tell you how much I appreciate these gals and these guys being with us tonight. You know, they're busy people. And they've got a lot to do. And they took the time out to be with us. And I think they deserve We're another round of applause. We're very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Let's, Thank let's you very on. much. Come on over. Thank go. you. All right, now, we want you to get your sheets out. You've all got sheets with the words. Come on in here, Paul. Ron and Bill, come on back up here. You can sing with us. Ron Wilson and Bill Gustin, come on back up here. Oh, good. Come on. Come on. And I, I understand. Oh, wait a minute. Before we sing, there's somebody coming down the aisle. Wait a minute. Who's that back there? We've got, oh, look at this. Santa Claus is here. Come on, Santa. Come on. 
Santa Claus, how are you? Oh, I'm just fine. Working hard, but I'm getting there. Busy time of year. Oh, just... isn't it, though? We you thank know, you for being here. Well, we... I'm... I know you've got your, your reindeer double park, so I won't. Right. You're going you're gonna to pass out some little gifts to everybody. Oh, i got a little something for everybody. Well, let's do Jerry. it. And let's get the music going okay. again. Go ahead, Santa. Here we go. Have a merry, 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 merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas. Put yourself in the glove. Christmas tree. 